So I think that it, there is a myth that financial staff, financial resources, so hiring a CFO, a bookkeeper, an accountant are, are really just a, a cost that there isn't any revenue generating related to that. Um, and so it's often deprioritized or seen as something as maybe a nice to have versus a need. Um, and I think that's a myth because there have been so many times where we work with a CEO and we see, okay, we're diving into the numbers. We're dissecting things. We're also talking about the business as a whole. We're talking org charge and efficiencies and operational strategies. And we find there's a whole untapped product line that you can, or a system that you can monetize that you haven't even, you know, you're not even charging people for. And so um, from that, everything may not be a direct revenue uh, generating service, but everything is indirect. I mean, finance touches literally everything that a business does. Um, and, and some of it can be directly revenue generating as well. Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Expert. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups in the seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Now, today we've got another great guest on the podcast, Lauren Colson. And uh, Lauren, we're going to be talking about a few great things. It's going to be all on the financial side today, which I promise isn't going to be as boring as it sounds. <laughs> kind of like when you hear an attorney say they're going to talk about law and you think this is going to be boring. We will be a good conversation, be a lot of great skills. Um, but we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, financial strategy of how to look or look at things on your business. Um, maybe some easy ways um, for you know founders or, or to keep on top of their business and the money of their and the finances of their business. Looking at uh, when is a good time to hire from a financial front. Um, also, maybe talk a little bit about uh, things uh, or things to think about from the financial side when you're selling a business, and also how to uh, to look at things on a month to month as far as the financial side as well. So, definitely a lot of great things to think about with your business. And with that much as an introduction, welcome on the podcast, Lauren. Hey, Devin, thanks for having me. Hey, I'm excited to have you, and looking forward to a great conversation. So. Now, for all of you that are listeners, you know, uh, in case uh, Lauren was also a guest on the uh, our sister podcast, The Inventive Journey. So, if you haven't had a chance, definitely go or encourage you to go and check out Lauren's episode over there, um, and and hear a little bit more about her journey and how she got to where we're at today. But for those listeners that are saying, "Hey, I've got too much to do. I just want to hear about or hear about the the expertise," or "Hey, I'll go catch up with that later," why don't you just give them a, a quick intro to you, a little bit about yourself and who you are? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Lauren. I am the CEO and founder of Colson Strategies, and we provide accounting and financial support to uh, small to medium-sized businesses. And so that's everything from bookkeeping, uh, closing your books each month, paying bills, sending invoices, running payroll, um, to CFO, which is the financial strategy. So look at it in two buckets and that the bookkeeping is what has happened in the past, which is super important. And the CFO is focused on what is going to happen in the future, being your partner um, on accountability and in the business for that go forward strategy that encompasses not just the financial piece, but really everything in your business. Awesome. Well, definitely a great intro and uh, looking forward to a great discussion. So maybe as you know, one of the, the topics that's uh, pretty, you know, maybe a bit more on point just because right now you're hearing everybody is going through, you know, or the tech, se tech se sector, if I can say it right, in particular is going through layoffs, but you also have, you hear job reports where there's lots of hiring and you have startups that are, you know, get go getting going and there's a lot of COVID startups and everything else. And so one of those things that people are always trying to figure out is, you know, when is the right time to hire people and when is the right time to fire people? You know, and hiring is obviously a lot more fun. Letting people go isn't as fun. Um, but, you know, and I know there's a lot of ways to approach that and to look at it. You know, it can be everything from where is the point of your business? You know, are you overwhelmed? Are you too busy? Do you not have enough time? But also one of the big, you know, fronts is on the financial front. In other words, can I afford to hire someone or am I not in a position where I can keep someone on as much as I'd like to and I need to let them go? So maybe, um, you know, kind of help us understand, at least from the kind of the financial perspective, hiring and firing, any thoughts on that or how to approach it? 
Yeah. So I'll start from the finance side. So um, the right time to hire a bookkeeper is um, as soon as you're making money. <laughs> and I say that because unless you started a bookkeeping company, it's probably not your expertise. And so in order to get timely and accurate financials, which is so important to have that information to run your business, um, you need to hire someone who that is their expertise. And so you're not spending your time on something that you don't know really well. It's also frustrating and you tend to procrastinate it and get behind and then kind of lose the value of having those numbers. Um, so we work with a lot of companies where we come in, the founder has done the bookkeeping for quite some time and we kind of have to redo it. <laughs> and so um, if if you're looking for the right time, the time, the time is now on the bookkeeping front. Now um, for CFOs, this is a, a bigger investment in terms of financial, but a couple things on that front. We use the fractional CFO model. So instead of, you know, not if you're not able to hire a full time CFO, which most small businesses and, uh, you know, startups, businesses just getting started can't and you don't need somebody full time. But to have um, that role involved with your business, especially in this economic client is huge because what they're going to do is they're going to help you figure out the hiring, right? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving pieces and you can't just come into a business and say, can I hire for position X, Y, Z? It's all big. It's all part of a bigger plan um, of understanding, okay, well, what is the business going to make this year? What are the projections? What does the cash flow look like? Do you, can you afford to bring on somebody full time? Can you, maybe you can afford it for the next three months, but can you sustain it for a year or whatever you need that role for and mm -hmm. doing the, the analysis on what is, what is the business truly need? What is the most cost effective resource? Um, and what can you sustain during cash flow? Maybe you, you know, you're like, okay, in Q3, I'm, I'm going to run out of cash, but then it's time to take on some debt or take an investment to give you over the hurdle. So um, it's all kind of part of it's all part of a larger discussion on what what is happening in your business yeah and let me ask because i think that you know in, in conceptually theoretically it makes perfect sense in agreeing with you but i you know one of the things that i think is a i don't know a fear but i guess a reality or whatever you want to call it if you're especially a startup or a small business just barely getting going maybe you're not even cash flow positive or you're just you know you're bootstrapping it or you're doing you know doing this as a side hustle when you can, you know, you start to make a, a tiny bit of money. Well, that money goes out just as quick as it comes in. In other words, it may be going back to inventory. It may be going back to overhead. It may be going back to development. It may be going back to sales and marketing, ad spend and everything else. And so, you know, absolutely, hypothetically in a, you know, as soon as you're starting making money, you'd have a CNA, CNA or CFO, either even a fractional on board. And yet in reality, you're saying, hey, we already have too many demands on our money. I understand I am not as skilled or trained as, you know, a CFO to do this. I just don't have the, you know, I, I have to spend the funds where, where they're needed. And if I have to step in and try and get it going, at least initially, that's a lot of the approach that, you know, people take. And so, you know, how do... That I think those are the a lot of the pressures and the things that people are trying to deal with and understand and juggle. So with that in mind, how do you, you know, realistically say by making ten dollars a month, is that a time that I go hire the CFO? Is it a thousand dollars a month? Is it more ramping up? Is it more of complexity of the business? Is it more, you know, I hate this and I want to get rid of it? Or or kind of how do you go about, you know, juggling that? Cause I think that that's what you know a lot of people are are looking at when they're getting going on a, a startup or a small business. Yeah. And I'd say. It kind of depends. So I'll touch on um, a, a few different areas. So it, we always start and ask the business owner, what are your goals? Are you trying to build the next billion dollar company? Is this a lifestyle business for you? Are you just trying to make as much profit as you can? Like, what are your goals? Because that is important for you to know if you haven't done that, like really deep thinking too. And what are, what are my personal goals and how do those feed into the business? I want to work two days a week. Okay, well, that's important. We, <laughs> you need to think about that when you're building out the infrastructure, right? So depending on your goals, you know, if you're like, I I want to hit unicorn status, like this is, I'm just going to blow this up. Everyone is going to know our name. Then mm -hmm. probably sooner rather than later, you want to hi hire the CFO that can help you, you know, create a pitch deck introduce you to investors, walk you through that and kind of be a big strategic part of that. Um, if you're 
a profitable company and you're like, we're growing steadily. I've got a firm understanding of my numbers, meaning I know what our profitability is by product. I understand how our cash flow is coming in. Like I, I know everything. Then maybe that's not a resource that you need because you've got a good handle on it. But the key is to really understanding your numbers when you are unclear on, okay, I know I want to start this new product line, but I'm not really sure where the cash is coming from and, and how to get there. That's when I say you need that strategic partner. Um, and we, we do project-based work. So we understand that maybe it's not a monthly recurring cost that someone needs, but they're ready to go into launching a new product or it's tapping into a new market and they needed a, a partner to evaluate with them just on a one-time basis. So that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, and then even if you are like, okay, I can't afford this right now. This is not, not the time. Then I would, I would strongly suggest mapping out your financials, what I say, like on paper, uh, because a lot of um, people will just think in their heads like, oh, I got it. I've got this in the bank. I know I'm going to make this and pay this. But mm. until you map it out and put every like brain dump everything out there and see, OK, this is what it this is what the ebbs and flows are. You're not going to get the true picture. And that's what you need. And it doesn't have to be complicated, um, but that's what you need to do to understand. And then seeing, okay, well, I'm actually going to have more cash than I thought. So now let me plan to make some of these investments sooner rather than later that can support our growth. Mm, yeah, I think that that makes perfect sense. Now, maybe one, you know, one question kind of is a follow-up to that, or you, you maybe hit on a little bit, because I think one of the other drawbacks or people, I think hear the, ter you know, if you're heavy, if you're experienced in the business, you probably know or have a, a decent idea of what a CFO does. If you're just getting started or, or figure, you know, figuring things out, you're going to say, the only thing I know that I need with finances is probably, I know I have to pay taxes at some point. And so maybe I need a CPA or I'll get a QuickBooks or a FreshBooks or something to at least track things that I'll then hand them over to them uh, right before tax season and say, figure this all out and get it taken care of. Um, but, you know, beyond that, a lot of people are saying, hey, this is a, a simple business. I make stuff and I sell it online or I have an e-commerce store or that. What is a CFO going to do? So help us understand typically what, you know, what does a CFO do or why you'd bring one on or what, how they would help you with your business or what, or, you know, what would that role would even be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the first things we do when we meet with clients is like I kind of mentioned earlier, understand what their goals are because it, it's super important from our perspective to understand what, what are we reaching towards? Is it revenue, profitability, working less, whatever it is, because that's what we want to help you build your business around. And from there, it's creating a financial roadmap, which is essentially- well, let, me add, let me just ask one, and I know I'm cutting you off, but I have a yeah. question, they'll forget it. So with that, um, you know, because I could, if I, and I like to play devil's advocate, so I'll just, I'll, I'll couch that right out of the front. But if I were to say, hey, you know, me understanding my finances, if I were to play that thing, it, it's not going to make me any more money, right? In other words, if I have a, if I have so much money coming in, if I know what I, my money coming in, it doesn't mean I have more money. It just means I have. And so does it really help my business early on to have someone tell me this is how much money you have, or this is where you're at, or would I be better to go and put out an ad spend in that? And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong, but that would be kind of if I were to put my startup hat on, I'm just trying to say you know, me knowing where my money's at, if it's really simple, I'll just look at my bank account. And I'm not saying you should, but a lot of people do, right? They just look at their bank account and say, okay, I've got more money. I've got X amount more money than I did last month. We're doing okay. I got X amount more money than last month. We're doing okay. And, you know, or, hey, we don't have very much money in the bank account. We got to figure something out. So how does knowing where your money's at or money is at and kind of how that's going actually impact or be beneficial to the business? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, that's a really great question. And that's how a lot of people manage their businesses. Like, okay, cool. I got a hundred K in the bank. I had 90 last month. I'm doing good. But the problem with that is that it doesn't give you a clear picture. So you're like, I understand I sell this product for a hundred dollars uh, each. Uh, that's the unit price. I pay these costs, et cetera. And I've got money in the bank and it's continuing to grow. Okay. Well, that's basic. Okay. Sounds like you're not going to potentially go out of business. But hmm. what decisions can you make if you know all of the information? So let's say that you're selling five different products and they all have different costs for you to make. 
And so you look at your profitability by product and you're like, actually, this product only makes us $3 where these ones make more than $5 um, a product. Like maybe we should stop the time and energy that the team is taking on this product and put that into growing and scaling these other products. And that's what you don't have without looking and seeing and analyzing the numbers because you can grow faster, better, more efficient if you're using those data points to make decisions. Does that make sense? No, it makes, uh, makes good sense. And uh, I, I certainly agree with that. And I think that, you know, it's one of those where, you know, if you watch, if you like to watch like the startup shows like Shark Tank and other things, you know, let's always know your numbers. And there's a reason why there's a benefit. And I'm in agreement with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate. But knowing your numbers lets you know where you could, you know, I think what you're saying is where you could maybe spend your time and effort on the business. So in other words, it may be that, you know, it's a less profitable product, but you're making it selling a whole lot more and you're making it overall, making it a lot better business. Or right. it could be, hey, you're putting a lot of time and effort into this product over here that's le much less lower profitability. You make a lot more money over here on the one that's more profitable and you need to a shift where you're, you're changing your time. So I think that, you know, having that understanding as to, you know, where the finances are, where the money's made, how it's working and, and kind of what that looks like gives you a much better insight as to, you know, how to manage your business or how to, to go about it. So exactly. with that, you know, maybe shifting gears just a little bit, because I think that, you know, that gives it a, it a, a higher level as to why you don't want a CFO now on a month to month, whether or not you have a CFO or you're saying, hey, we just don't have the money and I'm doing it myself. But if you're if, if you're a business and kind of looking at that, what are the kind of the month to month things you should be thinking about with your finance or looking at or otherwise taking a look at, you know, and not, you know, different than a year planning or trying to figure out where the direction of the business is, but you're just saying, Hey, month to month, I'm trying to keep the business going, trying to get the things I need to manage. What are some of the things you should be taking a look at or, or, or making sure to have managed? Yeah. So, um, on a high level, cause it, you know, various markers depend on industry, but definitely cash flow um, is having a beat on that and having kind of your expectations at a minimum for what the next 30 days looks like. Um, of course, you want to be looking at your financials every month. So you want to clue in on your top line revenue, your gross profit and what your profit margin is. Make sure you have a handle on your operating expenses and then what the end result is, your net, your net income. And is that meeting what your expectations and needs are for the business and having an understanding of, okay, what is this going to look like over the next couple months? Are we you know, going to stay status quo? Are we increasing um, and having an idea around that? Mm -hmm. um, other um, markers, if you are a business that sends invoices, you want to be looking at what's called your AR aging report. So that's your accounts receivable aging. So you send out invoices and you want to see who hasn't paid <laughs> and how long have they not paid so that you can reach out and proactively try to collect money from customers. Um, if you are a uh, product-based business, you want to look at your product numbers. So, you know, if you have any sort of idea of what that growth looks like, you're looking at, you know, number of products sold by month. And if you are using ad spend, you really want to be looking at, okay, what is my cost to acquire a customer, right? So if you're paying $500 in ad spend to get $600 um, in revenue, maybe that's not you know worth the time and energy and effort there. So understanding what those drivers are um, is really important to look at each month. No, I, I think that makes sense. I think, you know, it is, it, or or company by company and business by business per, or, or, you know, specific. And I think everything is different, whether it's your service-based business versus a product-based business. Are you a, you know, do you, are you a store that you have overhead and you have to pay for rent or are you in e-commerce and you can do it out of your garage type of a thing. But I think that gives some uh, good ideas as to um, what you should be looking at now. You know, one of the the fun things, or at least fun on my end, maybe we'll see if it's fun on your end. It is always good to go over as, you know, Every a lot of times you always hear the hear all the things you should do or hear all the things that made me successful. And yet a lot of times it's just as much avoiding mistakes or learning from others mistakes that can help you your business to be successful and then move things along. So if you're to kind of give the, you know, maybe hear the top mistakes that people make or the top or mistakes that people should avoid, especially, you know, focusing on just getting, you know, startups, bootstrapping, just getting started, kind of what are those things that oftentimes kind of get the mistakes that are made or things that people should keep in mind to avoid? 
Yeah. So one of the the pieces, and this is hard when you're juggling a lot of different things as a, as a founder, is staying organized overall, but staying organized in your fi- in your finances. Um, and I say that because we've seen clients where they didn't invoice customers that they should have. It got dropped through the cracks. They didn't have a project management tool or any type of system for the knowledge or information to get from whomever sold the the product or service to actually who's billing it, even if it's them. Um, And so that one just hurts to see when, you know, it's been months later and this gets uncovered and it's like, well, they're probably not going to collect that money now. And it's money that they earned. So um, having solid like systems and infrastructure in place to make sure your workflows are not only moving efficiently, but catching everything um, is super important. Um, I think that... And that that parlays everything from the start to selling a company, um, <laughs> the the organized workflow piece of things. Um, other things to think about um, I, when you are operating your business on a cash basis of accounting, where you're recording revenue and expenses as the cash comes in and out of the bank, which is what a lot of um, smaller and businesses just starting out do, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it can be misleading in terms of, you know, we bill the client a hundred thousand dollars for the year um, because they have a retainer, but you're, but you're also have to pay somebody if that's your model every month to service that. So you see a hundred thousand dollars in the bank and you're like, we got so much money, but you're not thinking like, okay, but there's costs that are going to come out for the rest of the year. So understanding again, like your cash flow and your numbers and reserving money if you need to, and not spending it before, um, you know, you've paid for all the costs is a big one. And that's why we always say, you know, creating that financial roadmap, even if it's you know, you plugging numbers in a spreadsheet to understand, okay, here's my revenue, where's all the costs associated with it um, is an important one. Um, We talked about the the AR aging and not letting customers go unpaid. You know, it's not just to send an invoice and forget it, whether it's you or a bookkeeper doing doing the books, you need to understand, okay, who hasn't paid? What do we need to do? Um, And those are the general ones that we consistently see no i think that's uh definitely makes some sense and i you know it, it seems crazy and, and yet you know i think they're or it's interesting it's i think especially it's harder it's easier to miss or getting paid or, or get to that money come in when you're on the services side in other words if you're just selling a physical product either when you ship it or when you drop it off or delivered it or when they you know purchase it you're going to, you're typically, you have, it's pretty easy to consistently get paid for it because you have that, you know, that trigger point yet, especially on services, sometimes it's whether, especially if you either get it, don't get it up front you get it over time and trying to keep on top of that or making sure that you get it, um, you know, build it here each month or get that retainer or make sure it gets replenished or, you know, you get it up front. And then as you notice, as you mentioned, you're getting paid and you think, oh, we've got all this money. We're going to go spend it. We're going to grow the business. And then you forget all the, you know, three or four months later when you have to cover all the costs and then you're back into that. So I think those are great ones to hit on. Well, as we're, we're already uh, had a, a great conversation, we're already starting to wrap towards the end of the episode. And there are, I'm sure, a lot more things that we could cover from a, a financial perspective than, uh, than we'll have time to go over today. So we'll have to have you probably back on sometime and uh, have a follow-on conversation. But at least for today, I um, always like to wrap up uh, each, uh, each episode with uh, uh, the same question. So we'll jump to that now, which is um, within your industry, what is the biggest myth and why is it wrong? So I think that there is a myth that financial staff, financial resources, so hiring a CFO, a bookkeeper, an accountant are are really just a a cost, that there isn't any revenue generating related to that. Um, And so it's often deprioritized or seen as something as maybe a nice to have versus a need. Um, And I think that's a myth because there have been so many times where we work with a CEO and we see, okay, we're diving into the numbers, we're dissecting things. We're also talking about the business as a whole. We're talking org charge and efficiencies and operational strategies. And we find there's a whole untapped product line that you can, or a system that you can monetize that you haven't even, you know, you're not even charging people for. And so um, from that, everything may not be a direct revenue uh, generating service, but 
everything is indirect. I mean, finance touches literally everything that a business does. Um, and, and some of it can be directly revenue generating as well. No, it makes makes perfect sense. And I think it's a great myth to dispel. You know, it's kind of it's but it is sometimes easier just to think, hey, if I don't see a direct correlation between a dollar coming in for a dollar spent, then you you tend to focus on where's that direct money coming in. Yeah, you can oftentimes miss out a lot on our ways to improve the business and make it more profitable and, and uh, more resilient long term. So I think that's a, a great myth to dispel. With that, as we do wrap up the episode, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, find out more? Yep, you can uh, reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. It's Lauren Colson, C-O-L-S-O-N. I'm pretty active there. Um, you can also visit our website, colsonstrategies.com. We have ways to communicate with myself and our team on there. Um, and you can also reach out to info at colsonstrategies.com and ask us a question. Awesome. We'll uh, definitely uh, encourage everybody to reach out and make a, a connection, utilize a great resource. So if nothing else, make a new best friend. So <laughs> I love it. with that, thank you again, Lauren, for coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now for all of you, their listeners that are out there. Uh, um, if you can help us to share this expertise with even more startups and small businesses, just go click share, subscribe, and leave us a review. Really helps us make or us to be able to reach even more startups and small businesses to help them along their journeys. And on that note, if you ever need help along your journey with patents, trademarks, or anything else with your startup or your small business, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat. We're always here to help. Well, thank you again, Lauren, for coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thanks, Devin. It was great.